So, we're back on the road, heading to Baltimore, New Jersey, Staten Island, uh, doing a big trip. Uh, if you remember, last time we tried to do the trip, the weather really got in the way. We made it to Lewistown, Pennsylvania. It started snowing pretty bad. I'm like, nah, not worth it. Uh, so, where we ended off last time was the Buick Rainier 2007 with an engine swap that was a kind of a weird crank, no crank, crank, no crank, So first stop uh, is going to be uh, Southern Baltimore on a 2012 Ford F-150 auction truck. Crank no start, 220,000 miles. The guy bought it, trying to flip it, thought it would be easy. It's not easy, so we'll diagnose it uh, for him there. Uh, next will be a 99 Chevy K3500 with a 5.7 Vortec. Again, new engine and it just doesn't run right it low power or something so we'll check on that and then the junkyard or not junkyard but uh dodge uh, i don't know what year early 2000s dodge pickup truck that the owner says tell me if i should throw it away it's in I guess kind of bad shape doesn't really run or shift so we'll get to that one that'll be day one and then it's on to staten island and this is why I live on a farm. Wouldn't want to deal with this every day. Traffic, people. <laughs> but we'll, uh, it's an adventure, so once in a while, uh, I do love to take a road trip and help people out. So we're almost at the first stop, the F-150 Crank No Start. First stop on the road trip, we're in Maryland, looking at this 2012 Ford F-150. EcoBoost, 220,000 miles. Customer complaint is, uh, crank no start, and it's an auction truck. Someone else has tried to repair it. Uh, so let's start from scratch. Uh, I did a full health report and just cleared all the codes out. There are a lot of codes in it, and I pulled up some data and this is fuel related data. It says crank fueling disabled, interesting. Fuel pump is off. Fuel pump error, yes error, 75% command, 53 desired PSI on the fuel rail, and 14.5 actual. Let's just crank it, see what happens. Now, this is a direct injected system, so this fuel rail pressure, I don't know if that's a, uh, Accurate, but let's just crank it, see what happens. Okay. Fuel pump stayed off. So you can see the desired was 1500, actual nothing. So let's go back and see if A, any code set. Okay, fuel rail pressure too low, engine cranking bank one. That that makes perfect sense. So we'll save those codes right here. And then go to the bi-directional controls and try to turn on this low pressure pump uh, in the tank. So in the actuation test menu, let's just try to turn on this fuel pump. Fuel pump duty cycle and the owner tells me that the fuel pump driver module, FPDM, has been replaced. And where does that live? Uh, somewhere in the back? In the, oh yeah, above the axle. Above the axle, okay. So we'll, we'll check that if we can't get this fuel pump to run. So let's go on. I don't hear anything. You don't hear anything? No fuel pump action? Okay. So let's pull up some wiring diagrams on uh, on the fuel pump in this little module. Do some basic checks and see if we can get this pump to run. Because without that, obviously the truck was not going to start. All right. So as soon as we started looking up wiring diagrams, fuse 27, 20 amp feeds the fuel pump relay load and control side. And then the owner's like, "Wait a minute! I forgot to plug the fuse in." 
that's a common problem apparently here's fuse 27 so you replaced it with a 30 amp fuse so let's see if the pump actually primes now and see what our fuel pressure is while cranking so I'm just gonna turn the key on all right let's go to the PCM clear that code out one more time and monitor our fuel pressure during cranking okay so the only hard fault here is a U0422 invalid data received from body control module now do you know anything about the body control module no. okay so that wasn't messed with so let's go right back to data stream and I'll see here fuel pressure let's go fuel pump fuel pump fault fuel desired pressure transducer status okay no error okay that's good fuel pump is off so let's graph these and crank it see if the desired matches the actual yeah not quite so you see desired went to 1250 actual only went to 200 psi that's like six times less than it should be so two possibilities here either the fuel pump in the tank is weak and not building enough pressure or the high pressure fuel pump under the hood is weak and not building enough pressure what can we do to determine you know either one let's look up in OEM service info how to check the actual fuel pressure of the low pressure side and then if that's good then we'll call this high pressure pump because that fuel rail pressure should build to more than you know 200 psi that's that's not enough for the this direct injected system so take a snapshot of that and let's just read data or um, I'm sorry read the fault code I'm assuming it's gonna say fuel rail pressure too low during cranking yep so same code even though our low pressure pump works now but we don't know if it's uh, working properly so let's get an actual fuel pressure gauge on the low pressure side and see what the pressure is. Okay. All right, so the fuel pressure spec on the low side of this 3.5 liter turbo is 62 to 73 PSI. So that's what we're looking for. <clears throat> and here's the gauge. So I just connected it straight to the supply line, just deadheading it. I wanna see what the maximum pressure of that fuel pump is once we just turn it on we turn it on with a scanner or prime it with a key we'll just look at the gauge right here and see what happens okay about 55 65 60 about 67 psi okay not too bad so now we can tee in the gauge, hook it up to the high pressure pump, and then see if that pressure is maintained during cranking. Uh, you know, we could just crank it and see if that pressure is maintained. Okay, that was interesting. 60 by 65. Okay. Um, yeah, let's tee it in and go from there. All right, so we got the fuel pressure gauge teed in now. Looking at our desired and actual. So right there is fuel rail pressure and that's desired. Let's crank it over. Yep, so that's a problem. And this maintained, you know, over 60 PSI So it's trying. 
So 1,000 was desired. Actual, it bumped up to a little over 500 and then, and then quit. Right. Yep. Okay, so, let's try that again. See, now it builds pressure. Now it drops pressure. So actually, at some point it did reach 1200 PSI. The truck still did not start. Very interesting. Let's uh, see if we set any more trouble codes. So it took a few cranks to bleed out that high pressure system apparently. Now we do have high pressure fuel, which is good. The truck is, you can hear that once in a while it goes, but, 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 you know, it tries to start, but then does not fire. So we need now uh, move towards the timing in terms of when is the ignition occurring, the spark, as opposed uh, versus TDC on a cylinder. Cam crank correlation. Now this, <clears throat> you know, right now during cranking it doesn't show any codes, but it doesn't mean the timing is correct. So that's where we have to go next. All right, let's try it one more time. See, desired stays at eight, or like nine hundred and the actual fuel pressure drops pretty fast from the initial spike of try again so 600 and then it goes so either the high pressure pump is bad but it's kind of kind of strange I think we might need an in-cylinder pressure transducer to correlate it with the ignition event. So I can get the fuel pressure to build just by doing short cranks to 1500 PSI. That's the current pressure in the fuel rail and this thing still is not starting. So I'm not ready to call the high pressure pump. Let's crank it. So that proves that the high pressure pump is capable of building the fuel pressure. So if I crank it for a little bit, there it is. It's steady, 1300 PSI. That should be enough to fire these injectors. We gotta charge this battery up a little bit. Let's read the fault codes one more time. Fuel rail pressure too low, engine cranking bank one. Why is it bank one? Let's look up that trouble code. Okay, so here's the pinpoint test for the P00C6 trouble code. So go to HP4, check for low pressure fuel system leak down. Our gauge is fine. We don't have any leak down at all. So that's fine. It's greater than 45 PSI. Yes, go to HP5. Check the fuel injection pump resistance. So we can do that between 0 0.3 and 3.1 ohms. Well, let's just do that just to see what it says. So at the high pressure fuel pump, I have my ohmmeter connected. 0 0.5 ohms. Now,
what is the resistance of just the leads if I connect the touch the leads together 0 0.2 0 0.1 ohms so I guess that's within spec 0 0.3 ohms that seems like really low we can put a scope on there and see how the computer is commanding that little valve in there to build the pressure so basically when the valve is commanded on it closes a little passage and allows the pressure to build if it's disconnected it won't build any pressure so I think I think we have to use the scope next so I got both wires on the high pressure fuel pump valve probed and let's see what happens when we crank it okay let's zoom in so stuff like this is pretty cool so this is when it is energized so this leg goes to 12 volts while the second leg is looks like it's grounded and after that pulse it there's one little pulse here and it keeps doing that keeps buzzing the high pressure pump So let's uh, let's do that again while looking at our actual fuel pressure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you can see it built up and then decreased. So I think it built up right there. That's when we started cranking. The 1250 and then it dropped off a cliff. Now I wonder why. Why wasn't the valve you know, energized all the time? Then it was a little bit there, a little bit there. A little more there no fuel pressure what does that mean hmm I wonder if we just manually energize that valve so it's closed all the time maximum pressure see what it builds to see if this truck starts again it's not exactly the right <laughs> Thing to do because you know the the high pressure will build to I don't know the ability of the pump but like this right here what's the duty cycle let's, let's inspect So it's like, yeah, maybe 20 or 30% duty cycle. So you don't really want to full field this pump, but we can maybe drive it through like a 5 amp test light to avoid burning anything up. Okay, so the data shows us that I started off with good fuel pressure in the fuel rail. Crank, 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 and the fuel pressure dropped right here, and then it started pulsing the pump. However, the pressure did not rise. It's like at 250 PSI. And the pump, you can see it even tried pulsing it more. It couldn't do anything. So initially it builds pressure, but I think when the injectors start firing, this thing just can't deliver enough volume. Everything is working, the computer's in control of this thing. So the pressure should should be enough. And you can hear the engine is trying to start, and then it's just not enough to keep going. And this pressure on the low side never never drops. So in this case, I 
I'm calling this high pressure pump and so replace the pump pretty easy job and do an oil change because the oil kind of smells like fuel now that pump may or may not be leaking internally but it just can't build the pressure and deliver the volume for the injectors to you know keep firing and start this thing up so that's the final call uh, uh, once the truck is fixed I'll do an update and diagnosis is guaranteed so uh, we'll leave it at that and move on to the next one Oh, a little bonus footage here is the high pressure pump it's original made in Japan pretty impressive that I went 220,000 miles and it does smell like gas on this side so replace this and go f go from there so a quick follow-up on the Ford F-150 EcoBoost crank no start so the owner went out to the dealership, bought a brand new high pressure pump, installed it, same thing, it would not start. Kind of had that feeling. When I call that pump, I'm like, mm, not 100% sure because we did see the pressure building up and then it would just decay very rapidly. Uh, if you remember, in the video at first I'm like, we should check timing with a pressure transducer and an ignition sink. Didn't quite get there, went down, you know, the path of no fuel pressure. Uh, that was the only code that was setting. The truck has 220,000 miles on it. High pressure pump was suspect. So, uh, basically, uh, the owner, um, I told him, hey man, I'll get down there again. Give me a few weeks. We'll finish it up because I have to guarantee my work. That's, that's my policy. If I don't do if I don't get the diag diagnosis 100% right, I'll have to go back there, no extra charge, and finish it up. So he was messing with it uh, on his own. I told him the only other variable here is is timing, you know, that physical engine timing, because everything, like the ignition, injectors, and the high pressure fuel pump, has to be timed uh, accordingly. Uh, for everything to happen, you know, everything has to be synced. So, he was checking, he pulled off a valve cover and wanted to see the timing marks. And he, he was turning the engine over. And he, I guess he went a little too far. And he tried to turn it ba uh, back by the crankshaft's pulley. And he heard a really bad noise. Like, grrr, like the crankshaft sprock, it was jumping teeth. After that noise happened, he tried to fire it up, and he said the truck fired up and ran really smoothly, perfect. <laughs> so I was like, wow, man. So you got super lucky that the timing jumped backwards and basically reset the timing, and now you're good. So that's the issue with the truck. The timing chains were super stretched. They were loose. They jumped time, and that resulted in incorrect timing of everything. Now you would think that would set a trouble code, but those timing codes only set when the engine's running. This engine couldn't even start, so the only code we were getting is low fuel pressure, which was, you know, an effect of the uh, the bad timing. So, anyways, that's the issue with the truck. I gave the owner a refund. He was very thankful um, that I at least put him on the right track, and that's how it goes sometimes. So. I should have followed my own rule. Whenever you suspect a timing problem, and you know if you don't have good cam crank correlation waveforms, at least do an in-cylinder pressure test and sync it with an ignition event. If that ignition event is not close to TDC, if it's way off, you're going after timing, no question about it. So that's the one test I wish I would have done. It would have been a cool capture, uh, but the, just the time pressure on the road, that's how it goes sometimes. And, uh, well, hope you enjoyed that one, and we'll see you on the next one.